What is up, everybody? It's the mailman, Jimmy Milstead, and this is episode 14 of the Small Package. Uh, we're doing another, uh, what do you call it, um, a video a video podcast? Is that what you guys call it? Um, podcast, I believe. Vod- podcast. Video yeah, gonna... on demand. Okay, video on demand. Sorry, guys, I'm still kind of... Uh, New at this whole podcast thing. Well, I'm the mailman. Podcast. What does podcast mean then? What's the P for? Well, eventually I'm gonna get this stuff up on uh, audio, but uh, let me get the introductions here real quick, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, the mailman, Jimmy Milstead here. Episode 14, small package, uh, WrestleMania roundtable review. Uh, we had WrestleMania over the past weekend in Los Angeles, California. Two nights, uh, two stellar shows, in my opinion. Uh, joining me once again, graciously. Uh, the Colonel Nick Reedy from Minnesota. It's Sting in the background, <laughs> and I've got uh, Mar- Mario here. Or no, wait, it is the chosen one, John Lopez. Uh, it's Mario. Oh, Mario. Um, what's up, guys? Uh, how you guys doing? And uh, what's on tap tonight? I know John might have to bounce here, so I'm glad he could join us. Anytime, buddy. Just got done watching what the after premium live event show should have been um, with our with our boys Tony Khan over on AEW. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty decent show. Uh, it is Wednesday, March the fifth. Uh, Mania was in the books a couple of days ago. Uh, we also had the Raw after WrestleMania and the big news over the weekend, guys. Um, Vince McMahon, I guess. Uh, you know, uh, Endeavor, the uh, UFC uh, parent company, has taken over uh, WWE. Uh, I don't have, like, all this stat stuff in front of me, but uh, you guys have initial reactions on uh, the big news over the weekend? Uh, Vince McMahon uh, selling the WWE to uh, Endeavor. Yeah, I, I this was a long time coming. I, I think that, you know, with some of the issues that... Vince has had um, legally and on the some of the outside stuff that it it was time. Um, I don't think Stephanie or Shane O quad recept tearing <laughs> Mac um, had any interest and in the amount of money that he sold it for. You know what was it reported? Nine point two billion. Um, is pretty large number, especially when they're keeping him on as executive chairman. So, I think that it uh, it definitely was coming um i think it went a lot faster than a lot of people thought it would because we heard the first report on um you know what was it maybe a couple weeks ago and all of a sudden it's a done deal so um i don't know i'm I'm a little indifferent um it seems like it's going to be the whole lot of the same thing again and we saw that i think on raw a lot of segments being changed for what he wanted a lot of endings being changed uh but in the end, um, I think it was going to happen. The only thing that I'm worried about is it doesn't bode very well for the direction I think that it's going to start going into. But we'll wait and see. Yeah, I mean, um, that's, that's everything he wants. Um, he gets to stick around. Uh, he seems to be uh, have all the power. Endeavor is not going to interfere with whatever they think. Uh, I guess they have faith in him. So uh, I believe Endeavor had no money down on this event, on this uh, purchase. So I'm not sure how it's going to play out. I mean, it has to be a long play for Vince. Uh, stock dropped um, initially, and I think it's still going down um, last I checked. So it's uh, it's an interesting play. Um, I guess if reports are true, Bailey's kind of doing the split skis because Vince is back. Uh, definitely going to be a PR thing. So you're going to see a lot of what happened in AEW with a whole bunch of unhappy wrestlers and that. Uh, don't want to be there, or maybe want to go somewhere else. Um, I just saw, looked up the uh, ratings for Raw. It was 2.26 million, I believe, if I saw that right. So that'll probably be a good benchmark. That's going to probably be the highest rated Raw for the year. Uh, and we got fed um, some shit sandwiches with a side of poop, uh, <laughs> poop dessert. I don't know, but it was not a good Raw. <laughs> Brock turning. I think he posted the whole never trust a Brock's handshake. So, uh, hey, anytime Brock shakes your hand, watch your back. Um, but, yeah, Vince, I'm not a big fan. Um, I think Brian Alvarez had a good little take on the last nine months was great. And it was uh, 
uh, I guess, likened to the Dallas series where that whole season was just a dream. And we had a dream for nine months, and now we're back to where we were. But, hey, Roman's still the champ. I got that right. I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah, John, uh, the chosen one, did pretty good on a couple of things. Uh, but uh, Vince McMahon in 1982 uh, bought the WWF for $1 million. Uh, and now it's what uh, nine point three billion? Yeah. To uh, Endeavor, twenty twenty three, and uh, wow, what do you what do you what do you before we talk about Mania? What do you think about Vince McMahon's uh, little mustache there? Uh, uh, there's something not right about this guy. I I don't know what to say. Uh, Clark Gable, what what are we calling this guy? Uh, he definitely looks like a cartoon character villain. Um. But, uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan of uh, him being back in the chair right now, guys. Uh, just just my opinion. But uh, Triple H, I thought was uh, doing a great job, and uh, looks like we're might be back on a bumpy road here. For uh, uh, apparently though, Triple H is uh, still in charge of creative, right? In title only. In probably. title. Yeah. <laughs> Vince has the last say on everything, I guess. But, I'm. Uh, I looked at it this way, and that was probably one of the best segments. By the way, Jimmy, uh, check your phone, mail, mail man. I sent you a little bit of mail. Um, okay. But I would say that I looked at the Triple H speech. I could see him moving on. The way he talked, the way that he you know, expressed it, that they're always going to be there and everything else. He, he just didn't seem like his normal self either. So I don't know if the writing's on the wall where he's deciding that, you know what, uh, for nine months I gave it my all, gave a great product, a lot of great storylines, you know, great comeback athletes, and just to watch it just crumble in literally about two hours. Because um, the other hour, what was it, 39 minutes was actual wrestling and everything else was uh, not. So, um, yeah, I, I'll be interested. But, again, I think that uh, – that might be Triple H's swan song or leading to it. I kind of think it's more of an apology. He's uh, he's he's always been about the fans. And this is like, hey, I, I'm here for you. Um, I'm not going anywhere. I don't think he's going anywhere. Where else could he go? He's not going to he's not going to go to impact. He's not going to go to ring. I mean, Tony Khan, ring of honor and the other two. Um, so, yeah, it just felt more an apology. He's like, hey, buckle down because we're going to have to ride out some more shittiness before we get back to me. Because, I mean, ultimately, he's going to – I think he's in the best position unless Endeavor doesn't want him to go. But, uh, you know, the viewing the, – the, the fans and the ratings are going to determine what happens, I think. At some point, they're going to be like, Vince is sinking the ship, so we're going to have to do something. So Triple H is just probably best set – to uh, sit back and see what happens. Yeah, but he doesn't need the money. He, he doesn't does. need the job, and that's nope. the thing. But it's the passion, the passion for wrestling. Oh, I get it. Sorry, guys, uh, if I appear to be a distracted host. I was uh, scrambling uh, as a producer here. Uh, I finally understand our last show. Sorry, John, we had you in the corner. I got the uh, the remote view going here, uh, or speaker view. Is that what it's called, Nick? Yeah, that's um, what it's called. It, the camera's finally rotating on the, the speakers, so I finally got that. Uh, we're learning show by show here, guys. Uh, apologize uh, if I have not seemed like a, a like I'm put together tonight. But uh, back to the weekend, uh, WrestleMania, uh, April 1st and 2nd, the two-night show. Uh, they're at SoFi Stadium, Inglewood, California. Uh First night attendance was 80,497. Uh, then the second night they have posted uh, 81,395 for a combined total for the weekend, 161,000. Oh, wait, I can't read this right. 161,892. Uh, WrestleMania goes to Hollywood, and our own pipe player Tim Kelly and uh, Kevin, uh, the metal taker, uh, Mendelssohn, were there. Uh, I haven't had a chance to um, see if, about getting them on for their reactions in-house, but uh, it seemed like those two gents enjoyed their uh, weekend, guys. Um, I didn't really hear too much as far as complaints on um, logistics over the weekend, but 
Uh, I'm not sure on a future show here. We'll definitely get their intake on their um, or their um, reactions on their WrestleMania visit there in Los Angeles. So um, first off, guys, um, let's just pick up night two as long as the chosen one can stay with us. Um, what did you guys think uh, the best match was for night one? Uh, we'll go with chosen one first. What, what, which match did you enjoy the most? I, I definitely enjoyed the tag match. The the Canadians came out and um, they took the Usos to the to the to the limit, and, and the crowd reacted. And the the uh, the crowds, the People's Choice won. We have new tag team champions. The Usos' reign is over, and a new reign will begin. Nick, your uh, favorite match oh, of night same. one? Same. Yeah. I agree completely. I mean, that match was stellar technical it had you know bashing bruising outside you know the ring it had everything you could want and i think it's not just what the people want i think it the the bed the better team won and i i think it has to do with you know a lot of division between jimmy and jay after the sammy storyline and kind of having to rebuild that relationship and that could be why they dropped it so that they could start from scratch and rebuild that chemistry that they had when they first came. But, uh, yeah, by far the best match, uh, you know, three hell of kicks. I mean, it was phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, um, I would uh, tend to agree with you guys. That was probably my favorite match of the night, but if I, um, was forced to come up with another matchup, uh, one match that really delivered for me more than I thought it was going to, I mean, I knew it was going to be a good match, but this one really, uh, I really, um, I want to go back and watch it a lot. Uh, the Rhea Ripley, the women's match, wins uh, beating Charlotte Flair. Uh, that was a 23-minute, 35-minute match uh, for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Rhea Ripley gets the win. Uh, my God, those two, that might have been the at least the best women's match I've seen. I, I mean, I'd have to um, really check my, uh, my catalog of matches again. I don't want to... Um, miss on anything that I, uh, I can't think of on this show here. Uh, but that one has been the best women's match I've seen in a long time. And it almost was my favorite match of the night. Uh, the bumps, some of these women were taking, uh, Charlotte Flair was a just, uh, I couldn't believe half the, uh, the bump she was taking a lot of, uh, face first hits into the mat. Uh, you know, her typical, uh, leap off the uh, ring post to the outside. Uh, these two ladies brought down the house, I thought, uh, and it was a really good match for uh, for me. I also enjoyed the Ray versus Dom match, uh, father versus son. That had a lot of good uh, moments in it. Uh, overall, I thought night one was uh, better than night two. Uh, chosen one, what, which, which night did you enjoy better? I agree. Night one seemed way better, and uh, I don't know if it was the looming news of Endeavor taking over for night two, but... Um, night two just did not feel like it went as smoothly. Um, obviously, Finn taking a, a big gash to the top of his head and needing 13 staples kind of put a crimp in it. Uh, Shane O'Mac um, leapfrogging oh. to the injured list was, <laughs> was funny. Snoop improvising, I guess, kudos to him because uh, he uh, he kept the show run, uh, going. Um, and then, of course, you know, Roman Roman winning was good for my pick, but it was fairly flat. I can't, can't imagine being in the stadium waiting for Cody to win and him not winning and just, like, going home not happy. Um, that probably wasn't best for business, but, you know, night two just did not feel nearly up to the same standard at night one set. Yeah, Chosen One, you... Uh convinced me i think the night we did the the uh, podcast uh, the first show uh that roman was gonna end up winning this uh i kept my cody pick just to uh uh just to be the uh to be different i guess but uh you you made a compelling uh argument for me to think that roman reigns was gonna retain this i mean with the a thousand days looming uh so much more uh, to add to this story and just to uh, throw with myself one last time, uh, I liked how Triple H said in the scrum that it's not about the story, um, finishing the story. The story always continues. And I think someone kind of cool with the Mario hat said that, too. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it's going to build it up. Cody's going to, if he can get through Brock, which seems kind of crazy. But, I mean, Brock has had great, great matches with AJ. 
Um, great matches with Brian Danielson. I think he'll have a oh, and CM Punk, and so a smaller guy like uh, Cody's frame will probably do just as good, and they'll have a great match. And I think Brock would put him over, and so the story will continue. Yes, sir. Uh, Nick, uh, your thoughts? Oh yeah, night one by far was better than night two. I think. You know, I think a lot of it had to do with some of the stoppage and some of the injuries. Yeah, it it totally killed the momentum. But you could tell and feel, and I hate to keep bringing this up, but you could feel more of Vince's fingers in second, the second night. Um, I think the first night, I agree, the women's match was absolutely phenomenal. I even think the ta- the triple, or um, yeah, the triple team, um, you know match with damage control and Lita, Becky Lynch, and Trish Stratish, I think had some good points. But I will say this, and this is going to be an unpopular opinion. I think Charlotte Flair is overrated. I think half of those bad bumps she took were her fault. I mean, she was over-rotating. She was trying too hard. Rhea Ripley made her look really good in spots. And that's sad to say with someone of, you know, Charlotte Flair's, you know, stature, especially, you know, from two or three years ago where she was just dominant. You look back about good women's match, look at um, Sasha Banks and Charlotte. I mean, they they had some phenomenal matches together, but I'm digressing a little bit. Um, I do agree the second night seemed as if it was off kilter right away. Um, Snoop, great job. He must have been told, hey, go in there and beat up the Miz. And he was like, what? Um, but was able to prolong it long enough so they could get Shane O'Mac back out the ring. But I look at the Hell and Cell match, and this is where WWE as a whole has started to lose me. I understand, you know, the audience. I understand that it's kids, which, well, by the way, they just got bought out by the Ultimate Fighting Championship, so I'm pretty sure that's going to go out the window. But um, when you're in a Hell in a Cell match, when they've, hyped it up is going to be just this insane match where people are going to get devastated and then you stop it as soon as you see a little bit of blood. Now, don't get me wrong. I didn't realize he needed, what was it, 18 or 21 staples. But they cleaned him up real pretty fast, and some of that could have been done, um, you know, later in, in as part of the match. And they could have they came in, but just completely stop the match. Um, and, you know, you can see what type of professional edge was. And he tried to keep the crowd entertained, try moving around, getting new toys out from under the ring, trying to distract. But it was just too much. And I think that that that's where they've kind of lost me a little bit is I get it. But sometimes you just got to let things happen. Um, so that match was great for night two. But I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about night two when we get there. But, uh, yeah, night one by far was awesome um way better so on uh, night one uh it opened up with uh what we all we were talked about uh was going to be the starter it was pretty much out there that john cena and uh the u.s championship uh, austin theory a town we're going to open up the show uh pretty good electric atmosphere uh, uh i can't remember um uh, who opened that thing um uh, it was uh, escaping my mind here. Uh, the Kevin Hart with the the cold open. Uh, what did you guys think of Kevin Hart? Uh, just uh, you know, a classic. He's hilarious. <laughs> WWE <laughs> open um, to bring it all in, and then um, I don't even remember. Was the um, I missed the national anthem or the? It was uh, some gal named Becky G, right? Right. She sang. I didn't. Know she was either. So. I'm not familiar with her, so uh, cute gal. But uh, so, anyways, um, the opener was Cena against uh, A Town, and uh, Cena coming out. Uh, he's like the biggest athlete out there, I think. That's uh, done the Make a Wish uh, program. Uh, he's he, granted, he's, he's granted yeah. more than anybody else, not just yeah. athletes. Anybody else by far. So I thought that was real cool. He uh, brought all those uh, uh, Make a Wish kids out on the stage. Uh, what did you guys think of uh, how Cena looked? That uh, bald spot is, he should be able to do something about that. <laughs> Savage <laughs> spray painted his head. Come on. <laughs> he could a little spray paint. <laughs> cover that. He definitely, very noticeable. He, def- 
He definitely hasn't spent any time, uh, whatever he's doing, uh, on his current project in the tanning bed. I mean, he was uh, pretty wh- uh, whiter than me. I know that. Uh, whiter than Sheamus. Uh, but uh, I-, I thought he, I, you know, when's the last time we saw Cena before this? SummerSlam? Uh, or- the last SmackDown of the year? SmackDown okay, 20- yeah, yeah, that's right. 2022? I had missed I and I don't think one. he was in that match very long. I think Kevin yeah. Owens did most of the work, and Cena made the hot tag that led to the pin. So he it was uh, very little ring work. Nick, what'd you what'd you think of uh, how Cena performed in this one? Oh, I think he looked fine. Um, this was the first of many of my prognostications that didn't come true, and some that came half true. I, I really thought that if you were going to make Austin Theory look strong. And, you know, maybe it was Cena's decision or maybe they didn't even think about it. But I thought that him ending Cena with the AA or maybe even the STFU would have given, you know, even more of a that villainous, you know, bad angle to AT. But, um, no, I think I think the match was fine. Um, Cena can still perform. He obviously is smaller than he was. Um, and that, that's very noticeable. Um, but, hey. Some of us have bald spots, and we're proud of it. Maybe he's one of them. Yeah. Rock it. <laughs> but I'm a peace out, guys. Y'all have a good rest of the show. Yeah. Hey, Chosen One, thanks a lot, buddy. Uh, you did a very uh, good job this um, small package uh, standings for our season, and I was gl- we'll, we'll, we'll have another great season, uh, and we'll that get with you on back during here. Backlash. I'll catch that, Tully. Right. Yeah. Or I'll finish four. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. Catch y'all later. All right, buddy. Thanks. Later. All right, Nick, uh, thanks to the Chosen One for joining us here. Um, I have been scrambling here because I my notes for the, the site I uh, enjoy reading, uh, well, they're all over the place, dude. So, I'll go through the matches if you want me to. So the next match was... Uh... Oh, no, wait. I, I had a couple things for the Cena match. Oh. Um, I said that one went 11 minutes, 20 seconds, right? No. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Austin Theory did beat uh, John Cena by pinfall. And there was a chosen one before he left us. Uh, he, he did predict that he would uh, get a uh, low blow in, yep. and that mm-hmm. happened. So uh, he had a pretty good uh, prediction on some of the uh, events that took place in that match. Uh, I'll grade that match a, a B, uh, some classic Cena spots. Uh, and, you know, for him not wrestling a lot this year, uh, you know, he always delivers. Uh, Theory kind of gets built up. A great deal, and um, we'll see where he goes from here. Do you have any predictions on where the, we saw him wrestle Rey Mysterio on the night after uh, WrestleMania on Raw? Uh, I thought it was a decent match, actually, but uh, he's just yeah. uh, getting built up. And Vince McMahon, if he's back, you know, this is his guy. Well, and he's just going to do the same thing he did with Randy Orton. He's just going to start going through some of the legends until... You know, something else comes up. So, I mean, he could be, we could be looking at, you know, probably Adolf Ziggler trying to put him in his place. We could be, you know, some of those mid-card guys until we get to a backlash or something else where somebody else, you know, higher end will will pop up to challenge. But um, I don't see him losing anytime soon. There's, there's really, you know, the United States Championship prior to... Um, him winning it, even when it was around Lashley's waist, it was always a working man's, you know, championship, yeah. and it's starting to go away that from that now. And we see the IC championship being part of that, but um, I don't see him dropping it before at least um, SummerSlam, possibly to start off the, uh, something new. But yeah, I think uh, he'll he'll follow if it's Vince McMahon picking it, he'll follow the Randy Orton. Let's start going after some of the legends that are still around and move up from there. All right, so the A-Town down uh, gets a big Mania win. Uh, next up, uh, what was it, the showcase match? Braun Strowman, Ricochet, yep. Yep. Uh, Street Profits, uh, Angelo Dawkins, Montez Ford. Uh, by the way, didn't they, they, they uh, on the pr- um, prediction show, I forgot, they had their big WrestleMania moment last year. They won the tag titles, didn't they? Yes, I, think, the I believe yeah. so. I had totally forgotten about that match, uh, but... But we didn't. Um, we all picked the Street Profits, I believe, uh, me and you at least, in this one. So I would have probably thought about it more because I forgot they had won on WrestleMania last year. But they keep a good streak going. Uh, but anyways, to finish off who they fought, uh, Alpha Academy, Chad Gable, Otis, 
and the Viking Raiders, Eric and Ivar, uh, they squared off in the showcase. And uh, this one was as advertised. I thought uh, these four teams uh, really brought it. Um, I ricochet, agree. Ricochet's ricochet, uh, attempting that shooting star press. Uh, he landed on Dawkins' knee. Um what was that spot uh, Gable had? Uh, where I he, can't... where he, um, the German suplex Strowman. Yeah, that might have been one of the spots of the whole show. Uh, oh, I was just really going to say, I, I think Gable stole that match, just reminding people how good he is, and I think that was part of it. Is you yeah. know, I think Gable's up for a run, and that might be who is going up for the United States Championship. That could be a good story for a couple, three months, to, uh, you know, prior, just to say, hey. You try and beat me there, kid. I'm try technical now. Uh, yeah. But it also made Angelo Dawkins look real strong when he ran over Strowman. Um, Montez Ford is Montez Ford. Phenomenal. And I think the Viking Raiders kind of took a step back with this yeah. match. It didn't make them look the monsters that they want to be. And again, that's, you know, you're going up against some pretty big name people and i mean otis is still gonna be otis and he's you know as a singles or a tag team um um, performer he's still gonna be awesome just because he's got that charisma and he's so over with everyone and anything he does so um i thought it was a good match i thought it was like you said as advertised um i think everybody went in knowing that the street (laughs) this was the street profits match to win or to lose and uh it kind of felt like it was filler at points but it, like you said, there were some pretty good spots. So in the end, they, I gave – go ahead. Oh, they had brought a Otis – or not Otis, uh, Titus O'Neil in to do yeah. the commentary. Uh, I actually enjoy him. I know a lot of our um, compadres uh, might not like him as much, but uh, he, he was uh, infatuated with Otis uh, perspiring all over, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> especially in the tights area. Uh, I thought that was kind of funny, actually. And uh, this was one of the matches where they kept uh, – Plug in, um, what the hell drink? What, what, what was it? Uh, or was that the other oh. match? Was uh, it the harder? Uh, it the was Mike's, harder. I think it was Ice Tea or whatever. Hard, kind of harder Mike's or Ice Tea okay. or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, they were really plugging the uh, advertisements on this uh, this WrestleMania, and we haven't even gotten to the Logan Paul match. But um, yeah. so yeah, that meant, um, I know that was um surprising. That match was only eight minutes thirty seconds. Nick, um, didn't you think it was a little longer than that? It felt longer, but I think. You know, looking back about four minutes in, they started picking up the action and it made it seem probably that it lasted longer than it was because it was just spot after spot after spot after spot. So um, with that three person high, was this the man? I think it was the three person high tower that they were going to try and do uh, the, um, you know, reverse DDT off of the top rope. And it just kind of didn't quite connect. Um, You know, it would have been a really cool spot, but obviously you know, super dangerous. So I, I can see why they yeah. were pretty shaky on it, but I mean, they had some good spots and they were setting up for be some good spots, but, uh, yeah. So at this point, uh, for the night I was, uh, two and oh, and I believe you were as well. It was uh, with good permissions, but then, um, it wasn't such a great night for us. Cause, uh, next up they had Logan Paul and Seth Rollins, uh, Logan Paul came in Shawn Michaels style, a uh, little, uh, they call him the Maverick. Uh, he came in, I guess he got latched up to the, uh, apparatus there. Uh, Shawn, what was that? WrestleMania Shawn Michaels this... came in on, he, he was way higher though. I would think. Yeah. Or maybe they, they might've been the same height. I don't remember, but he's just coming down the cable uh, up high. Uh, I don't, on the zip line, I was yeah. like, okay, yeah, I was okay with it, I guess. But, uh, um, what did you think of Seth Rollins gear? Uh, he came out in some pink and, um, he, God, I don't know what he was throwing. He it back paid to homage to a lot of people. Um, in the, the show before, I think it was the raw before where he basically had the Jeff Jarrett, you know, pink, uh, striped top on. And then he had, uh, the chaps on just like, uh, HBK. So, I mean, I think he was paying homage to a lot of the guys, that he enjoyed prior um, for this one. I have no idea what he was wearing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. So we can, um, uh, I have to read up on that. Uh, I don't know if a lot of these guys go after 
characters and video games and stuff that I've never yeah. heard of before. No, but, but I, uh, I I didn't see any of that. But I did. I do. I will backtrack a little bit and say that the red shoes he wore, that everyone made fun of, that he did the stomp in. There's a lot of celebrities wearing them now, so I yeah, don't know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Well, in this outfit, he had a huge uh, what, a uh, red robe or something coming out. Uh, yeah. He was pink, he was dressed pretty much in pink. Maybe he's a big acclaimed fan, um, from the AEW, uh, paying homage to the acclaimed. I guess. Uh, he was heavily garbed in pink uh logan was uh dressed in his uh normal what yellow i guess he had some blue with him yellow and blue um, yeah yeah both had a pretty good match uh, uh rollins faced logan paul uh and a and accompanied by that prime energy drink uh that everybody thought the guy underneath it was uh our truth and it's not it was some guy named ksi i guess Part of Logan Paul's posse of his YouTube uh, community. I have no idea who this guy. Do you know who this guy is, Nick? I don't. Yeah, I, he's KSI. another YouTube personality boxer. That whatever. I'm getting too old, man. I do oh, not. I am too. I don't know who some of these guys are, but uh, he had a heavily involved in the matchup in that Prime Energy drink suit at the end, as uh, Logan Paul tried to uh, elbow. Or was he taking a selfie again? Yeah, he was or, taking a selfie, then took a big drink, and then, uh, you know, by the time he was letting her fly, he didn't realize it was the prime energy drink on the Spanish announce table. Yeah. Um, seemed like so, both tables took the abuse. Uh, they always seemed like they're flirting with the Spanish, but then the Spanish announce table would be spared over the uh, regular yeah, uh, announcer's it table. The platform. <laughs> yeah. But um, this match went 16 minutes, 15 seconds. Um, a lot of these matches I want to rewatch again because I'm, I'm probably leaving out so much. Uh, but I was totally wrong on this one, Nick. Uh, Seth freaking finally ends the losing streak on, on a major uh, Mania shows, at least, ever since he beat Brock. Yep, uh, and, I, and I was I was the same way. I had Logan pulling the, the upset yeah. on this one, too, and just didn't happen. But I will take a step and say that uh, the, the outfit he was wearing for Mania was the one, you know, the the yellow strapless kind of tank top thing was, you know, total Jeff Jarrett, and then uh, he was wearing the chaps. I don't know where the big coat comes from, but, uh, <laughs> you know, to each his own. Um, yeah. But, yeah, we took an L on this one, Jimmy. But, uh, you know what, looking looking back, we, we had pretty good logic behind it, and I think it was good for Seth. Um, obviously another Vince guy, so um, it doesn't surprise me that uh, he wasn't going to drop it, but. You know, I, I said a lot of incorrect things on Seth Rollins' record, records for Mania um, during our last podcast. So this was just my comeuppance that I lost to him um, on this show. So um, good match, but uh, definitely definitely not our way. It's always cool to be wrong on stuff uh, as long as we come back and correct it. Like, uh, I've done that a bunch of times. Uh, so kudos there for... Uh, make it up for that uh but um where does um where do you think logan paul goes from here is um i don't know what his contract details are i would figure he would have uh, kept winning until a certain amount of time but uh is this guy still in the the e or is he is his time up i don't even i don't remember in. and i don't want to be quoted on it but I'm, i believe his contract was for six fights um so he's yeah. you know and that was after the last match so he should have five left so i'm thinking probably two um ple's a, a year um maybe three um for the next couple of years just to kind of get out there because but again with you know everything that's going on with the sale i don't know if some of his endorsement deals that he did with them or some of the deals that they had him endorsing was is going to go through or not so eh, well, who knows but i don't see anybody else that could no offense to him because he is working really hard, but no one who can make him look that good. Um, maybe Miz again, but I doubt yeah. that's going to happen. Yeah, I think I'm done with that. Well, I've that's had enough pl- of the Miz that's played over out, the week. Yeah. <laughs> so on uh, the Raw After Mania, you could tell uh, the show was ripped. Uh, the scripts were ripped up. Uh, there's YouTubes out there. Seth just comes in the ring on Monday Night Raw. Uh, no plan, new rival. For him yet. I, I, this is where I expected uh, maybe like a Jay White to show up, but we found out Jay White is all elite tonight on uh, all, all elite wrestling. He made his yeah. debut, the biggest and, free agent out there. 
We made the right uh, choice. Just, yeah. Um, I was expecting, Nick, on Monday Night Raw that maybe a guy like him would show his face here in this particular spot. But uh, with the news of Vince McMahon in the seat, uh, it sounds like he rewrote a lot of the stuff. And this segment looks like it was basically one of them. Seth just comes out in an, another ridiculous outfit, but I loved it. Yeah. And uh, all he did was stand in the ring and commercials are playing. And then he came back and he's he leaves. Uh, your thoughts on where Seth Rollins goes here? Well, I, I also saw some uh, articles from WrestleMania UK and, you know, a couple other p- places that uh, showed a part of clips of while we were watching commercials for the people not there. Um, somebody came up to Seth and talked to him in the ring from the outside. And that's kind of where he just kind of dropped the mic and, and walked away. So I'm assuming that one, either the, and I hate to say it, but the main event wasn't planned the way it ended up being. And they had to get some time back in a, to enable that to, you know, go through fruition, or he was going to call somebody out and was told that this, nope, that's not what's happening tonight. So I think it was brilliant on his part, letting the, you know, audience sing to him. The audience enjoyed it. They sang the whole time. It looked like, uh, through the commercials. So <laughs> kudos to him and then walking out. Um, but yeah, this is, I don't know. I don't know where to go with Seth either. And that's part of the problem we run into, um, now is, yeah. is where do these stories go? They didn't develop anything. They developed nah. one story at the end and who knows if that's even going to be developed. So I don't know. Oh man. I hope, uh, I was enjoying the WWE for a long time until, uh, it looks like Vince is back, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, let's move on to our next match, buddy. Uh, it was Damage Control in the six uh, women match versus the Legends with um, Becky Lynch, uh, Trish, and Lita. Uh, I, I like the intros for those guys. It was kind of like a comic book, uh, black and white type feel to it. Uh, you know, they all got nice uh, pops there on the stage. Uh, it was still light out. Um the sun was like pretty much not setting yet, uh, but you know this match delivered a little bit. Uh, Lita looked a little bit winded. Uh, that's probably due to her lack of wrestling here in the last few years. Well, uh, they uh, were being, you... they were being so careful with her too. I mean, and I, she was being very careful too. So I think that played a lot into it and slowed the match down because they couldn't go at a at a Lita pace. You know, flying, 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 flying. It, you could tell every time, every spot, she was being cradled pretty good. I mean, they took really good care of her. And, and kudos to, to Damage Control for being, you know, the professionals they are and, and making sure that, you know, they put on a good match, but everyone was safe. Um, you know, I took it all on this one, too. I thought Damage Control storyline, this would have been, you know, a phenomenal lead into raw to get the championships back from, uh, Trish Stratus and, uh, or Trish Stratus and, uh, um, Becky, the man, but, uh, or is it Lita? And the oh, man? it's Lita. It's Lita. Lita. Lita, yeah. the man. It would be, it would have been a good yeah. lead in to get them back. But, uh, obviously that's not how the storyline went. Um, we obviously know that Lita and Trish are big, big WWE, you know, mainstays. So, um, I could see them going on for a little bit longer, but okay. you know, it's sad. It's sad because I don't think there was anything cryptic about Becky's, um, tweet and she put out, I, I think she's gone. And I, I think that, that's, Oh, you mean ba- Bailey or Bailey? Yeah. Not Becky. Yeah. Um, I think she's gone. And I think that wow. a lot of it has to do with the way that she's been treated and, you know, booked throughout too. But, Again, to to go back to this match, I think it was good. I think it was good for it was exactly what we thought it was going to be, though. Um, Trish looks great. Um, even Lita looked great in spots, but you can definitely tell that they've got a lot of rust and they they they're not they're not made for the ring anymore. Um, Becky, awesome all the time. She can she can put you know just that spark into it, and I think damage control with uh, you know Dakota and 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 what is it uh, Dakota? Why can't I think of her name? Dakota Kai. Dakota Kai and uh, um, what's her name? Eos Kai. Eos Kai. Eos Kai. Yeah. I keep thinking Rio because I just watched her the night. But um, I think they put on a good show, and I think they're great competitors too. But, again, this was kind of more of a blah match for me. Um, you could tell that it was – they wanted to give everybody, you know, on the in the ring their, their due, but it kind of 
was one of those things where it's just you can't you can't do better than what it was um and what it will be but it was good um again another l for me on our picks because i thought damage co- control would come through but the man never loses i got this one right uh stratus deliver the chick kick to sky lita hit the lita salt to kai I mean, this just sounds like it's a rhyme here. And Lynch yeah. delivered the top rope manhandle slam on Bailey for the win. Uh, so uh, what did I say that match was? Uh, about 14 minutes. And uh, 14 minutes, 40 seconds. So big win there. Uh, oh, by the way, advertised for Raw next week. Uh, Lynch and Lita take on the, the the gals that won at Mania on night two. We'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, they ended up getting a big win on Raw as well, right? Um, Rodriguez and Morgan, and, uh, Liv Morgan. So um, I have a feeling that might be a title change, but we'll see. Uh, that that Raw is in Seattle, by the way. I can't make it. I got to work. But uh, Rey Mysterio and Dom Mysterio for the singles match. Father versus son was up next. Uh, I love the entrances of both these gentlemen. The big um, big spot in this one. Uh, Would you say? Uh, well, first of all. Dom comes out in the correctional van. Uh, at first, I was like, they missed an opportunity. Uh, and from, then, and yeah, then, then that, uh, that was my prediction. I thought that he would come out in his father, Eddie Guerrero's Lolo, but he didn't. Um, but Ray did. So that was uh, that was awesome. Yeah, uh, Ray, I love that um, vehicle he was riding in. Um, uh, it started off with the lie, cheat, steal, uh, Eddie Guerrero theme music. I loved it. Yeah. I miss that guy so much just for that theme song as well. But uh, I thought this was uh, probably my favorite match up to this point. Uh, it did get they get they gave him a lot of time to tell the story in the ring. Fourteen uh, minutes fifty five seconds was this one uh, after the entrances, um, and I got this one wrong as well. Nick, uh, who did you have? Did you have Ray? I had uh, I had Dom. I had Dom. Um, yeah, I thought it was going to be Judgment Day's uh, WrestleMania weekend, but Ray. The Hall of Famer. Uh, did you catch any of his um, speech or any of the Hall of Fame? I, I caught the beginning and then I stepped away. Um, so I was able to watch uh, Dominic, you know, play kayfabe the whole time and sit down and watch yeah. his dad and then walk out. But you could, you know, I don't remember if it was uh, another news outlet, but they kind of went back and looked at the video and you could tell that Dominic was holding back tears and he was trying real hard to stay yeah. in character, but he was so proud of his dad. So yeah. that was a cool moment. And, uh, you know, yeah, there's not much to say about yeah. this match. I th- it, it, it didn't turn out the way I thought it would. I thought that uh, Ray would put Dom over and that would be it, but obviously not. Um, but again, like you said, up to that point, that was probably the best match that we had seen in night one. Yeah, Ray delivered a 6-1-9, hit a frog splash for the three count. Uh, after the match, Ray celebrated with Legato and uh, that, that faction there. I have a feeling all those guys are going to be big players here in the upcoming Backlash pay-per-view to kick off our new year for pay-per-view predictions. Uh, so, and Bad Bunny's heavily involved on Monday Night Raw. Um, him and Dominic got into it. He got kind of assaulted there by both those gentlemen, uh, Dom and uh, Damian Priest. Damian Priest not on this WrestleMania card, but has a hand here. Probably going to get. I would, I would assume this is going to be a tag match of the new pay-per-view coming up. What, what are your thoughts on this one, Nick? Bad yeah, I think, I, I think they were pretty pretty obvious about who it was going to be. It's going to be Rey Mysterio, Bad Bunny versus, uh, you know, from the Judgment Day, Dominic, and uh, um, the big dog. I keep wanting to call him the Archer, but he doesn't want to be called that anymore. So, uh, oh, yeah. whatever. But, uh, um, yeah, I think, I think it's, it's going to be good. Um, probably a very quick match. But Bad Bunny has shown he can he can throw some bumps and take some hits, so it's going to be good. But you know, yeah, it's kind of kind of is what it is. And one point, uh, one other highlight of this match, uh, I saw a TikTok of it today or something. Mike Cole going off uh, the cameras on Mike Cole as he's announcing uh, when uh, Ray was just whipping that uh, <laughs> whipping Dom's ass uh, like with a troubled belt. youth, uh, yeah, with the belt there. <laughs> So I thought that was kind of a fun, uh, fun moment. I I knew this; these two had to face off, and I think they did a pretty good job. This had to be a match one day, and it, it finally came through. And I thought they it'll be a memorable match to look back on for years to come. Uh, with that, we move on to the women's 
SmackDown Women's Championship. And like I said, I was really a big fan of this at the top of the show. Uh, 23 minutes, 35 seconds. This one got a lot of time. Uh, I was more impressed, it sounds like, with this match than you were. Uh, I am a big fan of Rhea Ripley. I think she has a lot of charisma. And uh, I could see her holding this strap for a long time if they're into that in the ladies division. Um, this one, I just love the entrances. Uh, I know a lot of people aren't a fan of the new Rhea Ripley theme song. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. Charlotte's is kind of, I like to roll, uh, you know, her regular thing, but they've kind of tweaked that a bit. And, and that's been in the, the, her song for the, I guess for the last year, I guess, or since she's been back. But um, yeah, Charlotte Flair was the champ defending against Ray Ripley. Uh, Ripley attended a Riptide finisher. Uh, Flair reversed it into a DDT. Flair then attempted a figure four eight or a figure eight leg lock. Uh, Ripley ended up escaping that. Ripley delivered a top rope German suplex for a two count. I thought that was an impressive uh, move there, Nick. Flair attempted a spear. Ripley moved out of the way and delivered a headbutt. And hit a rip tied on uh, Flair for a two count. Flair then climbed to the top rope looking for a, a fallaway slam, but Ripley slammed Flair's head into the top ring post, allowing her to hit an avalanche rip tied to become the new champion. Uh, Ripley is the first woman to defeat Flair in a singles match at WrestleMania. That's what I was asking on the last show. Uh, I, I knew she probably had lost before, but as a singles competitor. No, um, I know. Yep, yeah, that was okay. Her first. That was no, uh, something. No, I agree with you. I think Rhea Ripley's phenomenal. I think it's going to be, you know, she's going to hold it for a long time if if um, it doesn't go to, you know, um, a Rousey again or, or somebody like that. But um, I think she's got charisma. I think she's over. I think people enjoy Mommy. I think I think it's just <laughs> she's just got that it. But, uh, yeah, I could see this Flair and Ripley um, – kind of storyline going for a while. We know that Rhea wants to take on the champ over there at Raw and get that uh, double belt, but I don't know if that's going to happen. So here's the question I have for you on this match. One, good match. We kind of already talked about it much, but um, for you, do you think that now Rhea is going to have to go to, to SmackDown? And what is that going to do to Judgment, Judgment Day? Or is all of Judgment Day going to move to SmackDown now? It's kind of tough to tell right now because they, they were teasing, uh, I guess, after both ladies won their belts. We haven't talked about Bel Air. She retains over the Raw, but they teased that match. I, I still think that one comes down probably by SummerSlam at least. Um, they'll eventually be going head to head. Maybe they unify it. I don't know about, I don't know how the brand statuses are going to be going through 2023, 2024. But uh, Ripley, I for sure probably see on SmackDown a lot. Uh, any kind of maybe Judgment Day faction stuff, she could hit each show yeah. and probably not be as um, involved, I guess, just you know, being ringside or something. But uh, that's a good question. Uh, I definitely see her probably having some programs over there on the, on the Blue Brand. Uh, Friday Night SmackDown still, I think, is a better show. Uh, well, me. Even though I, I haven't been able to catch the last few because of uh, hockey games uh, on Friday nights and I wish I, I do like uh, SmackDown on Friday night. I just uh, I, it's tough for me sometimes not to, to view that one Monday night. I'm usually not doing anything. But uh, your what are your thoughts? No, I, I I look at it and I see all the major belts are unified, but the women's belt. So I think yeah. it's either a matter of time that they unify it and go with the one back to the you know one belt per WWE, one tag team, one heavyweight or universal and one women's champ, or someone's got to start dropping some of these pairs, um, whether it be Sammy and, um, you know, KO now drop a set to somebody or, you know, Lord forbid the tribal chief, um, you know, lose <laughs> one of his, but I think they're going to unify him. And I, I do agree with you. I think that the, the branding is going to start to go, the way in the dodo and i think it's going to be you know just hey this is whatever they want to call it um and keep it that way but yeah. i don't know with everything in flux i just i just don't know anymore but going back to mania i think that they had a phenomenal match and that is what it is 
Yeah, if they are going to unify it, I guess they would be having their match sooner, I would I would think. I don't know. That's just my opinion. But uh, one other note from that match I was looking at um, that I didn't know. Ripley has become the first woman to win the Raw SmackDown uh, the NXT, the NXT UK, and the Women's Tag Team Championship. So she's uh, got her hands on pretty much every and any title that the WWE has had, except for the 24-7 title, I guess. But <laughs> we, we, they retired that thing anyways. But uh, So a good match there. I got the win. Um, who did you have? Oh, I had Ripley. Okay, so um, I was still doing pretty good that night, Nick. Uh, yep. I only yeah, had I was, the uh, Logan I was doing Paul good. loss. Just had a couple. Oh, of... Ray loss. Yep. So that came down to the uh, main event. Or w- no, wait. Pat McAfee. They had filler after that long match. Yeah. Uh, you needed to have a buffer. I had a feeling we'd see like Pat McAfee or a. Uh, uh, this is where I thought maybe they bring in like an LA Knight. Uh, Somebody. He wasn't featured uh, at all. I might have saw him for a cameo on the on the Hall of Fame weekend. Uh, this was a weird WrestleMania for that. I mean, we didn't see yeah. any mysterious new members. We didn't see anybody coming back. We didn't see anybody that wasn't supposed to be there, except for Shane McMahon. Um, yeah. But again, he's kind of a staple too, whether he comes out and just talks for a little bit or whether he you know, gets in a match. You could tell he wanted to do his coast-to-coast final move, but uh, didn't quite make it that far. But uh, again, um, it was oh, it just... Too felt weird because you know you know what, what have we had the last two who came out the last wrestlemania we had a a surprise comeback and then you know the hardys when they came back i mean there was so yeah. much that was there and it just felt like one i'm sure that they were trying to get jay white they were trying to go get some of these guys and it just didn't work out but you're right what a perfect time to have just some weird off the wall um, like, I don't know. It, it, anyway, it just, yeah, it felt, it felt bland to me. Yeah. They gave it uh three minutes, 40 seconds for you to get up and go take a shit or something <laughs> or grab yeah. a beer. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, George Kittle, I guess he was involved with that too. Uh, uh, former football, uh, still a football player, tight end for what the 49ers. Yep. And huge uh, wrestling fan. Yeah. Huge, he, huge he got, fan. uh, goaded in there. And uh, he helped. Pa- oh, by the way, uh, there was an impressive swanton off the, the ring post there by Pat McAfee. Pat. I mean, good Lord. I mean, no fear, whatever. What, this guy does it all. Uh, Pat McAfee ends up, uh, I guess, for WrestleMania record keeping purposes, defeats The Miz. Uh, Snoop um, <laughs> gets him on <laughs> night two. But uh, it did what it did. It gave you some time to grab a drink or something, and then uh, the main event hits Nick. I left my ring bell in my other room, so ding, ding, ding. Um, KO, Sami Zayn, buddy. Night one main event, um, Jay Uso and Jimmy Uso. The Usos were the champs. The undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships up for grabs. They gave this one 24 minutes, 15 seconds, buddy. A plus. Uh, yeah, a, a very great a match. Um, the the Haluva kicks at the end. It just um, man, there was all kinds of twists and turns in this match. Well, you just saw the emotion too. I mean, they they finished the story and told it. I mean, it was all there. It was, but again, you put four great competitors. I mean, the Usos since day one when they came out have just been phenomenal chemistry wise and then the chemistry that they have with Sami Zayn and KO over the years was apparent I mean it was it was phenomenal it was hard to tell who was calling that match at any time it looked like it was just natural so yeah uh, I I thought it was a phenomenal match I would have been happy if the Usos won probably not as happy as I was with Sami and KO just because the match was so good well, I think it put an exclamation mark on uh, KO and Sammy's years, uh, the way this uh, story was built throughout the whole year. Um, this one marked, uh, I mean, WrestleMania 1 had a, a tag team match main event, uh, but as far as a tag team championship, this was the first tag team championship match to ever headline a WrestleMania. Uh, only the second tag team match in general to, to main event. 
Uh, WrestleMania one, how can you forget that Hulk and Mr. T versus Roddy Piper and Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Uh, man, I love that. I love that stuff. Yep. That's why we're wrestling fans. But um, Owens delivered a swanton bomb for a two count. Uh, Usos delivered multiple super kicks in this match. Uh, so many two counts. Um, Owens was looking for a power bomb to Jimmy. Jay broke it up. Uh, Usos delivered double choke slams to Owens at one point through the announce table. Uh, Usos continued to deliver super kicks to Zane. There's just so many super kicks. If you were having a drink contest, um, you know, between this Young Bucks matches and Usos. I was going to say, um, I mean, <laughs> at one point they, they either, I, I, I will say it looks like they were paying homage to the Young Bucks, but the, the spot where they're holding Sammy by both arms and, you know, look at each other, point, and then kick. That, that's a young buck. I mean, that's, come on. I got to uh, rewatch the, but I, yeah, I'm sorry it, to interrupt. I get, did, did Sammy perform a uh, blue thunder bomb at all? Because for some reason, I'm not thinking of one. I'll have to rewatch the match. Uh, no, blue there thunder was bombs. so much. Yeah. There, so much going on. So, oh, uh, I guess the big move for the Usos is the one D uh, they got a two count out of that one. Uh, that doesn't happen. Um, Jay and then hit Zane with Zane's own finisher. Uh, Jay doing the hello Lua kicks. Yep. Uh, nothing doing. Uh, Zane, Zane then delivered an exploder suplex into Jay in the corner. Owens then tagged in and delivered pop-up power bombs. Um, that would just kill me personally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zane hit the Haluva kick to Jimmy and Owens hit the stunner for Jay for a two count. I mean, Electricity is just all over this arena. I, I got to go watch this again. Uh, Owens attempted a pop up power bomb. Jay escaped out, and along with his brother, hit the double super kicks to Owens this time. Uh, Usos were looking for a, a super 1D off the top rope. Holy crap. Zane pulled Jimmy to the floor, allowing Owens to hit the Avalanche Fisherman Buster to Jay. Owens then hit the stunner to Jimmy, and Zane delivered. Oh, we have a T Bird's goal. In the background, sorry for all the cheering. Um, playoff game. <laughs> uh, Zane delivered three Haluva kicks, like we said, to Jay to win the match. Uh, and that's how it ended, man. Uh, everything's hockey dory. Uh, there's probably some Uso fans disappointed, but uh, you couldn't have been disappointed. I saw a blood- guy wearing Bloodline shirt, and he was just like uh, going nuts, you know. Again, it was just a phenomenal match. I mean, it was it was storytelling at its best. Um, from start to finish, start to finish. And that win made Owens a Grand Slam champion. So, And as a reminder, um, the, another prognostication that me and uh, the chosen Juan had was they went back to Sammy's original music to start it up. So great. All right. Great idea. So, so that was night one um, in the books. Uh, night two, buddy. Um, I can't even remember here. Um, we opened up with um, some country singer guy. I never yeah, heard of him. I never heard of either of them either. At first, it was a slow start for the Oh Beautiful or whatever. And um, holy crap, he ended up doing a pretty good job, I thought. But uh, they opened this um, card up, Nick, with Brock Lesnar and Omos. Uh, this <sighs> one. Uh, I was wrong as far as um, time. I, I thought it would be under three minutes, but it was four minutes, 55 seconds. Uh, almost got a couple things in, but we saw Brock Lesnar defeat Omos. Get him up for the F5. Good visual. The match was what it was. And Brock beats Omos by pinfall. Yeah, that you know, it was exactly what we thought it was going to be. Two big dudes going in there and, you know, whatever. It was kind of cool to see Omos um, do a little bit more than just, you know, be a big man. He, he focused on Brock Lesnar's back, you know, kind of made it, you know, look like he was actually trying to to wear down for, you know, to save himself. And it worked. We saw the first time he tried the F5, um, went down to a knee. I mean, great sell by Brock. I mean, he made Omos look very strong, especially going against somebody like him. Um, but yeah, again, like you said, it was a filler, um, just an average C grade on that one. It was, it was what it was. 
So yeah, this night uh, there was only six advertised matchups. So and then the next up, you had the um, women's WrestleMania Showcase Fatal Four Tag Match, and this one only went eight minutes twenty five seconds. Uh, did we say Ronda Rousey was hurt? I mean, they were in this match, but Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler defeated Liv Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez, Natalia and Shotzi, Chelsea Green, and Sonya Deville uh, by submission. Um, I got this one right as well. It was what it was. I wasn't too impressed with it. Uh, Rousey, I want to say they're banged up. I don't. They weren't she, even. Um, they were outside of the ring a lot. Yeah, she had an elbow. Okay. Um, and if you, you saw Shayna Baszler was, only had one shoe on, I think she landed awkward and she was limping around too. So I think that that was the intended um, ending, but I think they're both banged up. Um, again, Ronda's getting better. She still, you know, has some cool spots, but she's still learning how to wrestle, and that, that's very apparent. Um, Baszler's better, um, but again, this wasn't really... Anything I was looking forward to match-wise. I'll just put it that way. Yeah, Rousey and Baszler win after Rousey submitted Shotzi, yep. Natalia's partner, with the armbar there. Okay, and then this uh, this this was uh, one of the candidates for matchup of the, uh, the whole weekend. Uh, it was the Intercontinental Championship match. Gunther, he's the SmackDown Intercontinental Champion. I had a feeling I was going to lose this one, by the way, after our pre-show. Uh, Drew McIntyre and Sheamus. Uh, it was a banger, guys. Um, closing stages, Sheamus delivered broke kick to Gunther, but McIntyre pulled Sheamus out of the ring. Drew then delivered a Claymore for a two-count. Sheamus then connected again with the broke kick, but Gunther broke out. This was a huge slap fest, by the way. I mean, these guys' chests have got to be caved Just in. Garbage, Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, there was a... Um, Powerbomb to Sheamus. Uh, McIntyre had a powerbomb to retain. Or no, I don't know who's writing this stuff that I wrote. <laughs> Holy crap, what the hell? Um, yeah, that was a total mess up. Uh, Shame, uh, Gunther retains. Uh, yeah. I thought all three of these guys deserved a standing ovation. Um, man, I've never seen so many chests read. Uh, hamburger beef, dude. It was um, it was just gnarly. So um, another one I'm gonna rewatch it. They gave them 16 minutes 40 seconds, and uh, Gunther's the IC champ. You got to think this guy's gonna get elevated to the main event scene at some point. Um, he'll probably keep this. Maybe he'll keep the Intercontinental title for a long time, like um, the chosen one said. Hey, you know, there is who is who is the greatest IC champion of all time? We're Honky coming up Tom. on those days. We're coming up on those days, but uh Well Do you remember what the total was for that? I don't even Oh, I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember. It was a long time though. Yeah. Um difference is not a lion cheating and stealing to hold on to it. Um Gunther is the real deal. Um he's just a monster. Um <laughs> But I will say that, you know, to before I get too much into the match, that if this was McIntyre's last match, which, um, again, more tri- cryptic tweaks from him, too. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if it would be to move to another another show. I think this might be just, hey, I, I, I'm good. But uh, I think that he's been, you know, for somebody who carried the the programming through COVID, yeah. And was able to perform. I think that he deserved more. And I'll just leave it at that. It's just, again, it goes into some of the stuff we've already talked about of who's writing the stories, who's, you know, running the program. But McIntyre definitely um, will be missed if he does go. And what a slobber knocker. I mean, old school JR yeah. just, just beat the hell out of each other. Um, not what I thought. I did see uh, a, a post on Instagram. I can't remember who posted it on the backstage with uh, Sheamus and McIntyre right yeah. at gorilla position at the end, just laying on the steps because they were just absolutely wiped. And that you, you just know that they just put on, went out there and gave you everything they had. So kudos to them. Yep. Um, I lo- I think I lost that pick too. I think I went with uh, um, Sheamus to win because the only belt he has yeah. put around his waist, but. You know, it's always there. And if McIntyre is gone, um, I could see another run with Shane and uh, 
Walter or Gunther, however you want to call him, um, coming up again. But good on Gunther. Um, great, great match. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I would, I would assume Sheamus one day is going to get that strap, but it wasn't to be that night. And uh, up to that point, I think that was probably my favorite match of the weekend, um, at least for night two. And um, at that point, um, our cha- our prediction champ, Lewis Tully, uh, he was behind. He ended up, um, or he was behind on night one, and he ended up tying the guys in front of us out of control, Cody Thomas and John Luce Cannon Lopez, Nick. Um, it was a three-way tie coming into night two. This is where he just started to run away with it. He pulled away, yeah. And this was the and match he, that, yeah. that gave the him next, the title. The next match was Bianca Belair and um, Asuka for the singles match for the uh, Raw Women's Championship. And this is where Tully clinches a third straight small package championship because all, all of them had the same picks after that. Um, unbelievable. Congrats, Lewis Tully. Um, yep. I don't know if that can ever be done again. Um, unless he goes for four here, uh, we start the new year with WWE backlash, but a shout out to Lewis Tully, buddy. Uh, three straight championships. Sir. Congrats. We will see, uh, if you can do it for a whoo fourth for the four horsemen. Uh, but Bel Air and Asuka, this one went 16 minutes and five seconds. Um, interesting intro. For both women, uh, Bianca came out to a bunch of uh, dancing um, gals that kind of uh, resembled her with the long ponytail, uh, super long ponytail. And they even had a contortionist, Nick, a little girl. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I heard the news that her mom passed away that day. Uh, they said that during the press conference. So that was real sad news when Triple yeah. H said that because he was uh, pretty much on the verge of tears when he mentioned that she uh, wanted to still do the show. So uh, I'm not sure what the little girl's name was, but uh, the minute I heard that, I was kind of like, oh, man, that took me out of it. But uh, she seemed to just enjoy the moment, and um, I'm sure they'll take care of her. Yeah. But um, that was kind of sad. But uh, interesting entrances for both ladies. Asuka's back. Uh, I thought it was a real good match. Uh, Nothing um, that I'm, like, raving about uh, as far as – memories is there any big time memory out of this match for you no you know with with oscar going back and doing the you know the poison spit like the buddha yeah. um is is awesome but watching it miss i think that this was a one two very talented ladies in there just given what they could and oscar being you know a striker and beller just being a powerhouse um definitely showed on display but i think again this sets up to you know, who are you going to put against Rhea Ripley? You're going to put her against Bel Air. You're going to put her against Asuka. And I think the more intriguing match is against Bel Air, two powerhouses against each other, but it takes nothing away from this match. They, um, a lot of good, not a lot of bad. Um, I gave it a B for the night, honestly, because it was, it was good. I, I do like the inning. Um, now that I'm starting to recall some of it, it's been a few days. I'm trying to, uh, Bel Air counter that Oscar lock uh, into the uh, KOD. Yep. Her finisher, the kiss of death. Uh, I thought that was I that was that was awesome. Uh, I like yep. the way they they ended that match. So uh, that's how Bel Air uh, retains. And we've already talked about it. Where it looks like they're kind of hinting the fact that it's gonna be Bel Air and Rhea Ripley here at some point. Um, oh, I would I'm, think I'm, maybe they. I'm thinking backlash. Like I said, it's the only oh, okay. only only belt that you know, doesn't have both around one waist. And I think the sooner they do it, and it could even be a SmackDown slash raw segment in the next wow. couple months. Um, I think that would be a waste of it, but that would lead into a storyline of just those two, you know, let's go back and just champ versus, you know, number one contender all the way up into SummerSlam, where I would think that, uh, um, Bel Air would win the strap back and move into Mania. But, um, again, that's just my thoughts and I have been wrong, but, uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be sooner rather than later because who, who are they going to go against? Rodriguez is teamed up with Liv. Um, yeah, I think, I think the women's division has, has some holes that it needs to fill. Um, 
singles competitor wise. So th- this could be something that could drag it out while we wait for some of the NXT talent to move up. Yeah, speaking of NXT, that India Hartwell won the women's NXT. I, I thought she would have been one of the um, she won the NXT belt surprisingly on that Saturday at Stand and Deliver. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool because I thought she'd be one of the women that were would be moving up, but uh, she still has the strap. And uh, I didn't catch NXT yesterday, so I don't know if she's already. She retained. She, retained. she retained it. Okay. Yeah. All right, buddy. Uh, we got two more matches to talk about. But first, uh, the two minutes and 20 second filler this night was a disaster. Uh, Miz out there again with Snoop. And Snoop pretty much uh, eggs. Uh, this time, um, Shane O'Mac comes out, buddy. And, um, you know, he he looked uh, the part. He was already sweating by the time he got to the ring. And this guy was amped full of energy. I can't remember. We hadn't seen Shane since, what, the Rumble or something? Yeah. Uh, was it this rumble? I can't, the, the years have run into me already, Nick. I can't even remember. Uh, but uh, he gets out there and um, comes off, was it the ropes? And um, tears his quad, dude. I thought it might have been uh, he leap messed up his knee. So he was oh, leapfrogging. He leapfrogging. Okay. And he came down and he immediately went to a knee. And he didn't look, it didn't look like whatever. He tried to get back up and couldn't. Um, yeah. And kudos for the Miz for you know, kind of stopping and, you know, kind of looking at him and then, uh, you know, rest from there. Um, you can recap, but yeah, he was, he was doing a, just leapfrogging and he had already done it once. So we did it again and just, that was it. Like father, yes. like son, don't jump. Triple H, even, um, quad family there, <laughs> the McQuads, <laughs> but <laughs> my God, uh, as soon as they turn the cameras away, you know, it's bad. It's, I just had Joe Theismann type, uh, Memories coming back. Uh, I thought he might have tore his knee because I didn't like the way the leg looked. But uh, uh, all the best to Shane O'Mac. Uh, there's a ton of memes out there. I don't like making fun of uh, injuries, but uh, he'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> there were some funny ones out there, though. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. But uh, that led us into the uh, Hell in a Cell match, buddy. Um, 18 uh, minutes, 10 we're, seconds. We're not oh, going to go talk. We're not going to talk about the way that Snoop oh. saved the match. Go ahead, buddy. It uh, came in. People's elbow. Two rights. Sorry. Yeah. And the Snoop elbow. I'll tell you what. He was not hitting those ropes very hard. No, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> those are the lightest um, rope, um, whatever you call it, uh, coming yeah, off the ropes. He I've wasn't ever seen slingshot. In my life. He wasn't like, slingshot he barely, very hard. But he got some power, man. Hey, he, and, uh, hey. Kudos to him for saving that spot and giving the docs time to get Shane out, yeah. keep him off the camera because I don't think his kids or anybody needed to see that. Um, I would, yeah, so. I would love to, I would love to hear him uh, tell this story on a, on a podcast or something because he looked cool, calm, and collected like he always is, and uh, it didn't phase him, dude. No, no. So, are you talking? Are you talking Snoop or Snoop? Snoop? Shane? Snoop? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He was probably. Oh, I didn't see Shane. I didn't see Shane at the after they. Stop yeah, he going. seemed fine. There are some video of him going backstage, and he's he's you know obviously getting some help to walk, but he's using both of his legs good. So that's I think when they knew it wasn't totally serious, um, but obviously something was wrong. Uh, but yeah, Snoop looked calm and collected, probably because he didn't know he was in the ring for the first ten minutes of it. If you know what I'm saying, the green room yeah. was pretty green in the back. But uh, yeah, but yeah, I just wanted to put push out to that. I thought that that was super professional and and whoever came up with suggested him hey come punch me um could have been the miz could have been the ref could have been somebody but uh i think that that saved that segment at least a little bit but you're right it was a train wreck yeah could have been worse i guess yeah it's kind of it's kind of like the in, in, in introduction to this show i'm sorry uh i gotta re- rewatch this uh i was um putting together everything and everything kind of disappeared on me and then I had you guys up, and I'm trying to open the show, and then the the cameras are up, and don't don't worry about it. Other, but, we'll get uh, it. We'll get it. This yeah. is a good good practice runs as we go. Yeah, it's gonna get better, and I appreciate you guys listening. But we got two more matches to talk about, and one of them is the Hell in the Cell, Edge, and Finn Balor, the Demon, um, Edge coming out. Uh, was that Slayer? I can't even remember. Um, it was a, a oh, brood edge. Yeah, it was a slayer. Yeah. And he had um 
kind of, it was a cool mask. It kind of reminds me of G.I. Joe uh, Destro, but uh, is it, was it an homage to anything else that I might be missing in pop culture? No, just a, just a mirror mask. Uh, I think if you looked at his, his coat told a good story too. Um, it, it, it looked like, you know, the old school leather and parts for the red jacket back in the beginning. It had the brood photos of the three of them there. Um, it, it was kind of cool. It was just cool to see that he paid some homage and went back to the, the devil himself. So, so, um, then the match or Finn Balor came out, he had the demon look obviously. And he had, uh, added some purple to his look for the judgment day. And uh, your thoughts on that, his old theme song, thankfully yeah. came out and you could tell the crowd loved it. They were into it and it was, it was phenomenal. Again, I think because Finn is over more than, than a lot of the people in WWE want to give him credit for. I mean, the Prince, right. I mean, he's done so much, um, yeah. but the match itself, I thought was phenomenal. I know we talked a little bit in the beginning about, you know, getting that gash and when oh, it hit. Man. When it, when that ladder hit, I'm like, oh, that that he missed it. <laughs> how many how many stitches did he take? They showed the photo on. It was either 18 or 21 staples. Yeah, it, it, it was more on the top of his head all, than I thought. Yeah. yeah. So I had thought I, I had thought it was like his nose maybe at first when I saw it, but I mean obviously. Yeah, it did remind me of the Morrison hit in the ladder match when it was uh, Morrison and uh, Miz versus the Hardys, and do uh, you remember that match? Yeah, yeah, Much yeah. Where the ladder came up and hit Morrison. That was the Joey Mercury. That was just, Joey Mercury. Uh, oh, was it Mercury? Almost lost a, yeah, almost lost the eyeball off that. Yeah, it was, it was really like, bad. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it, it looked like that. But, again, I, I already kind of spoke on this in the beginning with, uh, you know, the chosen one. Is just, it, it killed the momentum. They did a great job. It's a hell in a cell match. There's tables, ladders, and chairs, and kendo sticks, and they're beating the hell out of each other's backs. Guess what? Blood's going to happen. It's time to push forward. Now, if because of how bad it was, I get it, but you could have fit it into the story somehow. Um, you know, either have Edge get knocked unconscious, and the medical comes in and checks on both of them, starts wrapping them up, something. Um, but instead, it just kind of turned into a almost 10-minute dead spot. Yeah, but, uh, it was unfortunately it it was what it was. Yeah, but um, they brought it was the traditional. Um, I, I don't remember what your opinion was. It's the traditional Hell in a Cell. It wasn't painted red. I mean, they had painted chairs for some reason. Well, purple they had, and red. Well, they had purple for Finn Balor and red for Edge of the Brood. I mean, that's why they were painted that way. It was it was paying homage to their two groups against each other, which I think is probably part of the reason they didn't want the cell to be red. Other than I've heard a lot of people complain that the red was hard to see, whatever it's, it's a cage. Yeah. Let's, let's calm down us. Uh, marks need yeah. to let it be. It's, it's gray or red. Who cares? Um, but I think a lot of that had to do with it. So the, I think that the color that they added into it, I know a lot of people in the group were, what is the purple chairs for? Oh, they're red chairs. Well, if, if <laughs> I was one if, of them, I was one of them. <laughs> I know, but if you paid attention, red for the brood yeah. and purple yeah. for Judgment Day. I mean, it made perfect it. sense. Um, I thought the spot with uh, Edge trapping him in the corner with the kendo sticks and then dive kicking him, that had to hurt because it broke the kendo stick. <laughs> so I mean, there was there was some pretty good spots, but uh, you know, again, two incredible athletes who know their way around you know, some pretty hellacious, uh, apparatuses, um, did a great work. And I'm glad I came out on top with, you know, the rated R yeah. superstar, um, pulling the wind through. So yeah, uh, Balor to end this match, climbed the wall of the cage and attempted an elevated coup de gras, uh, with that table, uh, edge moved out of the way and he went right through that thing. Uh, I'm, I'm glad he didn't get hurt there. Holy crap. Yeah. That table, uh, that table didn't give, uh, I think, kind of gave a little bit too easy. <laughs> he almost, he was went yeah. straight through the, to the mat. So, so edge hit the spear and gets a big delivered, um, concerto to Balor. Uh, and he gets the big WrestleMania victory. Uh, I enjoyed the match. Um, and, um, uh, my guy, you were the only one I believe that got that pick or was it maybe one other person? No, I think there was a couple of us who picked it. Okay. Uh, I know I got that one wrong, and um, 
I was out of the contest before this show, but uh, I was hey, still man. wanted to win. <laughs> I was out of the contest right after Royal Rumble, so don't even worry about it. <laughs> yeah. So that brings us, buddy, to the the main event of the big show. Uh, WrestleMania goes to Hollywood. It was Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman and Solo Sokoa versus the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Uh, both entrances were awesome. Pyro all over that. I know Mendel Taker being there was actively texting us, telling us how awesome. He really enjoyed Cody Rhodes' entrance. And Pyro. Up. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really is electric when you're there in person as a veteran of seven main event or seven WrestleManias. Uh, it doesn't matter how you like the entire show. Uh, a big fight feel like that. Uh, is worth all the pennies that you put in the uh, ticket to go there and all the travel expenses. Uh, this one, Nick, 34 minutes, 35 seconds. I love the story both men told in this match in front of the SoFi crowd. Uh, the Tribal Chief, it wasn't meant to be for Cody. Cody's story is not finished. <laughs> and like Chosen One has said, it's never going to be finished anyways, but... Um, uh, a very good match. I, I I can't believe it was that long. It seemed quicker than that to me because it was so good. I wanted to keep going, but um, um, just uh, Roman does one of the best jobs playing to the uh, the crowd out of just about anybody in wrestling. I mean, very good heel. Yeah, um, but but is he really? See that that that's and that's one of the things that's always confused me about the booking of Roman. I mean, he started out and he was booed and he didn't do well with it. And so we learned and got better. And I agree with you. He can play off the crowd and he will. Um, he'll pick you out of the crowd if he sees something and he'll he'll he makes you feel like you're there. Yeah. Um, great job. But why 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 would you make Cody look so strong to then? have the match end on a sicko Sokoa Is that what you call spike. Him? Yeah. Sicka? Sicko? Sicka. Sicko. Oh, okay. From, um, you know what I mean? S- to, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, to get him on Sika. Up on Sika. Yeah. <laughs> but to get a Samoan spike, right. To end the match. And basically that's what it was. No matter what happened afterwards, the spear, it didn't, it didn't matter. Right, you spent 34 minutes beating the hell out of Cody Rhodes. Spear after spear after Superman punch after Superman punch, and he just keeps coming at you. And then the Usos come in, and they get ran out by Sammy and and KO, which was a great story, part of the story too. Phenomenal. Again, a kind of changing of the guard um, type thing. But then to the end, to have Solo come out of the crowd and Samoan spike him. I mean, I get it. It's a bloodline. You know, we we expected some type of shenanigans. But that made Roman look so weak. And maybe that's what they're trying to do. I think they maybe were, they're man. Try- well, I they're trying so. to think. also make Cody look good, but what also I loved about Cody um they gave him credit or a tribute to his dad with bionic elbow. Oh, that was awesome. And then he had two more uh, crossroads after that. Uh, I love that move, by the way, Nick. Uh, it's such oh, a good it's, visual. It's awesome. Yeah. It I actually think awesome. it's a move that looks like it actually hurts. Uh, just the way <laughs> <got it. laughs> your neck swinging. Just but, like yeah. Snoop uh, going off the ropes and the people. <laughs> he does it so well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I mean, obviously not the ending I wanted and or, you know, probably 80 percent of the people in that stadium wanted but that's that's wrestling i mean it's you never you never know what's going to happen um but again what i meant by that is making cody look so strong and then the next night to yeah. what destroy that storyline so now he's got to go through brock lesnar what does brock lesnar care about that one know? caught me out of the blue well so. it doesn't make any sense because he can't fight roman again so yeah. why not drop one of the belts or you know somehow and this would have been great and this would have made perfect sense to me somehow monday night raw comes out Heyman comes out with a contract and says cody 
this was only for the Universal Championship. This wasn't for the black strap. Yeah. So that that kind of protects him. He still got his streak, and now you have a reason for Brock to go after Cody. There's no reason for Brock to go after Cody. <laughs> there, there, it didn't make any sense. Oh, now, I get it. Brock, I, Brock is the best in that atmosphere where Brock does what Brock wants. And maybe that hand, maybe that handshake really sets him off when somebody. Uh, well, I mean, he's the one that came out, so he came out and, and asked but, for it. Yeah, the Monday night after Raw. It's unpredictable. Uh, I just don't know if Vince uh, knows what he was doing there, but uh, he wanted to. That was basically what the whole show was around, by the way, on on Monday. Yeah. It's the tag match, and it wasn't even a match. But uh, Brock had not wrestled on a Raw since, what, 2002? 2002. (laughs) And he still. (laughs) There was no match. Um, There was no match. Reigns and Heyman, Councilman, and um, Solo uh, just kind of. Gladly disappeared after that. <laughs> well, so, and uh, I just, I don't know. It's just, it's one of those frustrating things where, you know, as a fan, obviously we're here to, to partake in the product and, and let them show us what they want to show us and enter, enter, and then enjoy it. But this felt so disconjointed. Now, I get the whole story on right? Mania, and like I said, I don't like the ending, but I could get the ending. And your Roman is the man. Um, two years ago, he complained that Kenny Omega was the top wrestler and was, to- was touted as the top wrestler in wrestling all over the world. And now it's Roman. I get it. But <laughs> you totally lost me on Raw. You, you lost everything I had. It's like literally someone came in, especially with this match, and pushed the reset button. I know that Chills and Juan said it, we talked about it in the beginning, but specifically about this match. It was basically like this match never happened. Which sucks, because like you said, this match was 34 minutes of phenomenal storytelling and great spots and big moments that now is just gone. So... Kind of long-winded. I apologize. Got on a soapbox because we know that I'm not a big uh, blood what fan. Um, but yeah. So yeah, at the beginning of our um, pre-show or our um, prediction roundtable last show, uh, apparently we lost uh, as far as any kind of rock showing up <laughs> WrestleMania weekend. So SE scoops, you were wrong. <laughs> um, couple of notes here that I'm looking at. I'm not sure. I got to. Make sure it's true, but uh, I'm saying it was the seventh time a heel won the main event at WrestleMania. Is that it? I guess they've had a lot of baby faces go over. I don't know if I'm reading that right. I don't but this know. is the third time in a row for Reigns. Um, he is the Universal Champion. Acknowledge him, Roman Reigns. But um, again, can we can we even consider him a heel anymore? And that's that's what I mean. Is yeah. he's one of those enigmas that's so hard to classify. And I think that's what makes him so special. Um, he's not a baby face. He's not a heel because he does baby face things, bring his family together, you know, go out and help them and move on. And then he does heel things where, hey, Jay and Jimmy on Monday night, go get on the plane because you lost. Yeah. Um, so it's it's weird. So um, once again, congratulations to our champion, Lewis Tully. He ends up finishing the... Uh, Small package season with 133 points coming from from behind to capture a third small package championship in our predictions from WrestleMania to WrestleMania, including AEW and NXT shows. Uh, out of control, uh, he beats out of control Cody Thomas and loose cannon John Lopez by three points. Uh, after all, it was all said and done. They finished with 130, and they came in Nick to the weekend. Uh, 128, up, 128, 128. Yeah, after night one, yeah. Uh, kudos to the um, original champion, the, the bar, Rory Barr over in England. Uh, he ended up passing a bunch of people, including me. Uh, he finished with 126 points. So, And he missed a pay-per-view this year, Nick. That's impressive. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Um, yeah, and the mailman, myself, um, Firefighter Mike. I'm wondering where he was tonight. Uh, I thought he wanted to come on tonight, but I'll, I'll get with him for backlash, I guess. Uh, the Chosen One, who um, did a opening 
uh, match running with us tonight. Uh, he finished with 125 points. He took some chances. He did get a lot right, but he did fall a little bit. He was in fourth place. Uh, Metal Taker finished pretty nicely at 120 points. Uh, Pipe Player finished real nice at 116 points. I would have loved to have them on tonight, too. I'll have to get them on at some point on our next uh, wrestling talk show to see what their WrestleMania experience was again. And then the Colonel, 107 points. Nick Reedy, uh, at least you got over the century mark, buddy. Nice job. Uh, the Woodchuck, 100. 104 points, and then our boy Rat Boy. He's had a busy year. Uh, he ended up get, uh, getting all his picks in this weekend, Nick. He finished uh, strong, 57 points all yeah, year. Good, good for him. I know um, he's been he's been busy and out of it. So, thanks for participating. So, Nick, um, watching AEW tonight. Speaking of England, uh, they announced uh, AEW is going to have what are they calling it? Are they calling it all out? It's all, all out. It's no. over in Wembley Stadium. It is all in. I think, and that was, all in? yeah, that was the very first match that Cody, Kenny, and the, uh, God, why is my brain is not working today? It's been a long day, but, uh, um, anyway, it's the very first match that they were put on as kind of like an independent foursome. Um, so yeah, it should be interesting. I think that it kind of helps <laughs> that, um, Tony Khan's dad may own a team over there. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Soccer. So, I mean, it, it, it kind of opens up that market, but I, I said it a couple years ago and I said it last year to you and earlier this year, watch out. I mean, they have a product and it's not a bad product and it continues to get better. Um, so just watch out to the big product in New York, which is now Vegas. I don't even know where the new ownership yeah. is but uh, all, i'm always gonna call them new york as long as it's called wwe yeah so but um so the england boys they're going to money in the bank there in june or so i wonder if they'll splurge to go to wembley i'm not sure how far of a drive that is but i would love to have somebody on the ground there and tell us how that was but uh nick uh, it was a long one it was a rough start for me but thanks for uh picking it up for me hey no problem buddy and like i said we'll get We'll get better. We'll get uh, yeah. get to where we need to be. And, you know, to all the listeners out there, thank you for, you know, listening to me and the mailman ramble for the last two or three times. There's, but, a, uh, there's probably only one person out there for all I know. That's it's John fine. Getting open, but... Okay. Thanks, John. And uh, thanks, yeah. Jimmy's mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but uh, Nick, uh, it's been great. Yeah, I can't, I can't thank you enough, buddy, for, um, I mean, if any – anybody doesn't listen to this i don't care i had a great time talking to you and uh we're gonna do it again buddy oh um, yeah let's and guess what it's almost hockey playoff time anyway so we oh, have no. even more to sit we're, down and and talk about and i still haven't gotten my wrestling smart card back um i'm a way better talker when it comes to bucks uh i feel like i've missed a lot tonight but uh yeah we're gonna have a uh a playoff preview uh with the playoffs here coming up as the National Hockey League is winding it down the season. At least Nick's Minnesota Wild are still in. Can't say so much for my Washington Capitals. So, uh, uh, Nick, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, help sharing on your Wild. I know the Seattle Kraken are on the verge of making the playoffs out here. I think that might be where uh, Mike's at tonight. No, no, they play tomorrow. Yeah. Fire and if everything stays the way it is, they're coming to the state of hockey to start it off. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Maybe we can get Firefighter Mike and Tim Pipeler Kelly on here to talk smack. I'm more of a Seattle Thunderbirds fan as far as WHL. Uh, the Caps are still my team back in D.C., but we're not making the postseason. But uh, lots of hockey to come up. Uh, it was a great, though, WrestleMania weekend. I really did enjoy it, Nick, and I, I enjoyed the banter with all you guys. Uh, our next pay-per-view to talk about will be Backlash, another New York product. Uh, AEW's is first is uh, at, what Memorial Day weekend, I believe. Yeah. So we'll talk about that one as well. And a new season of predictions is on the horizon. So I want to thank the chosen one for jumping in with us at the beginning. And uh, that was the chosen one, John Lopez there in uh, Round Rock, Texas. And, and my buddy, Nick Reedy from the state of hockey, the Colonel. Man, thanks for joining me, buddy. I'm the mailman, Jimmy Milstead. This has been the WrestleMania recap show, the small package episode 14. Gorilla Monsoon always said it's going to be happening. It's going to be happening. Good night, guys.